Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today's video is just going to be a very short one. I'm just going to be showing you guys how to edit a portrait photo like the one I've got on my screen right now. Um, this is the before, and then this is the after. So just kind of making things pop a little bit, making the person stand out from the background a little bit, um, making the eyes pop and the hair pop. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's video. Very simple colour grade, nothing too complicated. So before I do dive straight in, if you want to get your hands on about 500 lightning presets, 75 Photoshop actions, uh, about 30 Photoshop brushes, and a bunch of Photoshop overlays, there's a top link down below in the description now. There's a huge discount going on. Um, Thousands of people have been loving this. Like, honestly, we've had so much feedback. Everyone's absolutely loving this thing. Um, we've also got our Lightroom course down there as well, which you can get in this huge bundle for free. Um, it takes you from beginner to professional. So if you don't know anything about Lightroom, this course is perfect for you. If you're intermediate and you've used Lightroom before, there are some advanced editing techniques and tips and tricks in there that you can kind of really learn by taking the course, um, literally from anyone, any level, you can uh, learn a lot from this course. If you want to get yourself onto that course and get yourself all of those presets, bundles, brushes, everything, the top link down below in the description. But without any further ado, guys, let's just jump straight into today's video. So this is the photo we're going to be editing. Um, again, very simple, really quite a cool photo. Unfortunately, I didn't take this photo, um, but this is the before and then this is the after. So as you can see, I'm just literally just making the image pop a little bit more. So let's just reset this. Um, and start from scratch and start the colour grade. So first things first, when it comes to portrait photography I like to separate the uh, subject from the background and I like to kind of soften the image a little bit. So you see here on the person's face, the girl's face, we've got a lot of stark highlights and um, we've got some very dark shadows around here. We haven't got very much detail in the shadows. So what I like to do is soften the highlights, bring up the shadows, bring that detail back into the image. This is also going to help as well bring some detail back into the uh, background, kind of see a little bit what's going on in the background there. So, very simple technique, but all we're going to do really is bring down those highlights, so you can see immediately we get a lot more detail back in the uh, subject's face. We've got these really nice freckles that are now showing through that we didn't have before, um, and we're now going to bring up the shadows pretty much to 100, so immediately you can see the amount of difference we've made. So before and after, flatten the whole image across, um, and you can see a lot more detail. I am going to brighten up the image just a bit, so I'm just going to bring up the exposure a touch, bring up the whites a little bit, um, and maybe just kind of bring those blacks down just to put in a little bit more contrast. Uh, talking of contrast, I'm just going to get the contrast slider and just bring it up a little bit. So essentially what that's going to do is like give us a lot of detail in the shadows um, and the highlights have a bit of a brain blank there. Um, but at the same time, it's not going to remove all the contrast in the image. We're going to add that all back in by adjusting those blanks and those contrast tones. Now, I really, really like this image. I'm going to bring up the exposure just a little bit more there. And I think put in a little bit more contrast. Really like the contrast in this image. The ginger hair is absolutely amazing and it's going to make for a really nice image, especially contrasted really well with the freckles on the face. Absolutely uh, perfect image. So another technique that's really good to kind of help if you want your portrait images to pop, like really stand out, like really stark bright hair. I mean this orange hair here, we can make it really stand out, um, separate from the dark background by using our clarity slider. So essentially if you bring your clarity slider up to the right a little bit, um, obviously not too far that she looks like some kind of demon, but um, to about plus 20, plus 10, um, I wouldn't recommend going too much beyond there because too far beyond that, their skin texture starts looking a bit too contrasting, a bit gritty, um, and it looks a bit too unnatural. But you can see, essentially, what it does is it gets those brightest highlights and it makes them brighter, and it gets the darkest darks and makes them a little bit darker, and it adds in a bit of sharpening and contrast as well. So that is a really, really useful effect to use if you want to get the hair to pop out. So a before and after, you can see immediately, almost looks like a completely different photo. So. That's pretty much that done on the basics panel. Uh, what I think I'm going to do though is bring up the saturation just a bit. That's just because we've got this really nice orange hair. I don't see any reason why we don't want it to stand out in the image, so just bottom, like, bring it up a little bit, makes the image look really nice. Some people like to bring the vibrancy down a little bit as well, just to kind of counteract um, the saturation. Okay, so that's really nice. Let's come down to our tone curve. So what I'm going to do is I think, I'm just trying to work out what to do here. Um, again, all of this is personal preference, but I think I'm going to darken those shadows a little bit just by bringing my tone curve down. Um, but at the same time, I'm going to get my mid-tones and bring them up a little bit. So what that's going to do is just really add in even more contrast to the image. Now, having said that, I don't want too much contrast, so um, I've got quite a lot of contrast added in on our basic slider up here. So uh, maybe I'll bring down a little bit of the contrast up here, just to kind of counteract. Okay, so very, very subtle. 
Um, what I might do is just bring down those highlights there just to make sure we crush those highlights and we don't have any really stark white image, like flashes on her skin like here and on the sides of her face. Okay, so a before and after, really looking quite nice. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to the HSL sliders. Now, when it comes to portrait photography, I don't like to edit the colors too much because it makes the person look really unnatural. Like, if you, if you think about it, your eyes are really used to looking at humans. Um, one of the most like key things is you can tell when something's wrong with someone's face, especially in like a CG like film, if you ever watched a CG film, and something about them doesn't look quite natural. That's because your brain's very used to looking at humans. So as soon as you start you know, tweaking all the colors and making this person look absolutely insane, um, something in your brain's gonna trigger, like, trigger that this looks slightly odd. So personally, I don't like tweaking the colors too much. I just like taking the colors from what they are and making them a little bit more you know, vibrant, make them pop a little bit more. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So with the orange slider, we can either make her hair more like auburn red by bringing it to the left, um, which kind of gives her that effect that she's dyed her hair bright red. We can bring it to the right um, and it gives this really horrible greeny um, yellow look. So I'm just gonna bring it slightly um, to the left, I think, just to take out any bit of green tinge that we had in the hair, but nothing too much. Now the red slider is going to kind of adjust the color of the lips and maybe a little bit of the color of the skin. Um, again, take that to the left and it becomes more pink, to the right it becomes more orange. So I'm going to take it a little bit to the left just to make sure that her lips contrast her hair because we've got a little bit more red in the hair now. I want to make sure her lips look more red than her hair. I don't want everything blending into each other. So I'm going to bring that to the left a little bit. Okay, so that's pretty much most of the colors there. Um, yellow is going to be her skin tone. You see, if I bring it to the right, it makes it a little bit more green and anemic. To the left, a little bit more pink and maybe a little bit more like warmer colored. So I'm probably going to bring that just a touch to the left as well. So that's all we're really going to do on those hues there. Again, as I said, really not going to do very much. With the blues, this is going to really change the background. Now, this is really fun just to play around with. I had a go with this earlier. Um, essentially, if I slide this to the left, we get a really cool green in the background and to the right we get a really cool purple. But, you know, I quite like this, you know, tealy steel blue in the background. Um, so I'm gonna bring up my aquas to the right a little bit just to make that background even more blue. Something to take note is when you adjust the blues in a portrait photography, usually you adjust the color in the eyeballs as well. So especially around here on the whites of the eyes, you can see if I move this to the left, her eyes go really green. So that's something to take into account when you start adjusting those colors because essentially what happens is the whites of her eyes will be like reflecting the color of the wall or reflecting the light coming through the window or whatever it might be. Usually that light is kind of blue, so when you adjust that, it adjusts the color of her eyes as well. So I like to leave that kind of standard. I wouldn't adjust that too much. Obviously you can um, selectively like kind of adjust certain areas of the image, but um, that's what we're gonna be doing. So next we're gonna come down to saturation. Now, as I said, I wanna make this image really pop, so I'm just gonna bring up that orange saturation just to make her hair really, really bright from the image. I'm also gonna bring up the saturation of the reds, which is just gonna make those lips have a little bit more life to them um, and stand out again from her skin. So something that I really like about this image is the how pale her skin is um, and how we can kind of make that really contrast with her hair. Also, apologies uh, for the sirens outside. There's not much I can do about it. Okay, so that is pretty much what we're going to be doing on the saturation. Um, what I might do actually is just desaturate the background a little bit, just make it a little bit more um, kind of grey blue, because what that will do is separate our subject from the background. We don't want the viewer's attention going to the background, we want it to be landing on the viewer's face. So that's why it's so important to edit this photo, because you see this is the before, her hair is basically the same like colour as the background, and it's kind of pretty much the same. Uh, darkness, brightness, um, as the background as well. So it's kind of very flat, whereas now um, she's standing out a lot from the image. Next, we're gonna come down to luminance. Luminance will selectively brighten up certain colors. So we're gonna selectively brighten up the orange, just to, again, make it really punchy, make it really stand out. Um, and again, with her lips as well, and maybe a little bit on the skin, just on the yellows that'll brighten up the highlights, like on her shoulder down here. Um, and that's pretty much sorted. now. If I show you before and after, you can see how different the image looks. What I'm going to be doing is I am going to have a go at putting in some split toning. Split toning is always good fun. It helps to kind of uniform up the entire image. But um, again, personal preference. So I'm going to put the saturation up. Hold down Alt on my keyboard. I've got a Mac um, option. Alt, I think it's the same on a PC. And essentially slide across just to see the color that I'm applying. Now, I want to apply like a, a blue to the shadows. Um, and then I think apply a little bit of orange to the highlights. 
So if I turn that off and on, yep, I really like that. Now, a lot of you are probably watching this being like, barely any change has just happened, but pay attention to her face here. Look at her face now when I've got it on, and if I turn it off, you can see the difference on her face. So her face here looks almost to me a little bit too blue. Um, it's got a little bit of green tinge in there, and it, it, there's something slightly off. Whereas I turn this on now, it kind of adds in a little bit more orange, a little bit of pink to her face, makes it look a little bit more natural. Um, if anything, I might just bring down that um, saturation just a tiny bit. Okay, so that's the split turning done. Sharpening, I'm gonna bring that up just a tiny bit. I might zoom in on her face if I can select this bit here, just to sharpen up the eyeballs. Um, nothing too much. If you bring it up too much, it kind of makes her look like she's from a comic, which is a bit weird, so I wouldn't do it too much, but something about 30 to 40 uh, works quite well. Okay, noise reduction, just leave that standard, everything else leave it standard. Now, something that is good fun to play with is camera calibration, obviously, personal preference. Um, Slides to the left, you can make her hair look really pinky, and to the right, again, a really weird colour. Um, you know, you can have some really good effects that can be achieved by using the camera calibration. I would definitely suggest just kind of having a little bit of a play around with it. Like for example, I really like that effect. I've just brought my green primary to the right. Um, just to help, you know, make your images look a little bit more unique and different from someone else's. You know, it's up to you. Do what you, do what you want, whatever makes you guys happy. So that is pretty much done on the photo, guys. What I am gonna do though is show you how you can brighten up her eyes. Um, I'm just gonna zoom in here over to her eyes. Now you can use the ellipse tool to do this, but personally I prefer using the brush. What we can do is just um, bring up our exposure a bit, brush around her iris here, and essentially that's just gonna brighten up her eyes, just to make it kind of punch out and stand out a little bit more. You can get the highlights and bring those up as well. Now we don't wanna make it too bright because it looks like her eyes are literally glowing like she's some kind of vampire, which doesn't work very well but if you bring up the saturation as well what this is going to do is really just going to kind of make her eyes be like a part a really good subject of the image and um, you can also play around by adding in some temperature which just as you can see it makes her eyes here look really orange or really weirdly blue so we're going to bring it up to about four um, not much make sure we've brushed around the whole um, of the iris oh let's move that back okay so click done and now if we zoom back out again, you can see before and after her eyes now just stand out a little bit more. You can also do a lot of fun stuff, which is just essentially just getting your brushes, um, setting everything kind of to standard, um, and then just going around having a play around and brushing in, oh, that's not the brush, that's the, that's the ellipse tool, um, brushing in like highlights um, and shadows and stuff onto certain areas of the image just to make it just pop out and stand out a little bit more. But that is pretty much the end of the video, guys. Um, I hope you have enjoyed it, and hopefully you've learnt a few tips and a few tricks. I'll put that in full screen so you guys can see the full photo. Really stunning photo. Congratulations to the person who took the photo. Absolutely love this. Um, but there you go. That's how you edit a kind of really contrasty, bring to life a raw photo of a person that you've taken. Personally, I really enjoy editing portrait photos. It's a lot of good fun um, before and after. Before and after. So there we go guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a thumbs up down below and suggest any comments of things you want to watch down below as well. Also guys, before you go anywhere, um, what do you think about us releasing a bunch of videos on how to run a business? I've had like hundreds of questions over my Instagram account um, about how to run a business or how I make my money online as a YouTuber, all that kind of stuff. If you want to see any of those videos, even on Facebook ads, I also run Facebook ads, YouTube ads, all that kind of stuff, um, leave a comment down below and say you'd love to see that. Like, you know, I'd love to learn about how you run a business online, just so I can get a bit of a feel if people want to watch those kind of videos. Um, that'd be really cool. Um, but anyway, guys, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. It's Matthew underscore GKB and my brother, Sebastian underscore JWB. Links down below in the description as always, and I'll see you guys in the next video.